in amazing times. Our 20th century world is wealthy in ways that ancient man could not have imagined. The reason is simple. We have made tremendous advances in scientific knowledge. In our century, Einstein's theory of special relativity, the familiar E equals MC squared, has led to everything from lasers to nuclear weapons. From the development of quantum mechanics, the study of how particles behave within atoms, we have gotten computers, transistor radios, and nearly everything electronic. Now, a small group of physicists wants to build the largest single scientific instrument ever created. The idea is to look still deeper into atoms, to see inside the heart of things. The Joyce Gay Report is underwritten by the Woodlands Corporation, developers of the Woodlands, today's real hometown for people and companies. And by Mitchell Energy and Development Corporation, finding and producing natural gas and oil for over 40 years. To me, the greatest impact is going to be on the structure of knowledge. We're going to move closer to an understanding of the fundamental laws of nature. What these scientists want to do is to build what they call a superconducting super collider, or SSC, in a rural area of North Texas near Dallas. And thanks to a concerted effort by Texas scientists and leaders, it may happen. The federal government has selected the site, and if Congress approves the funding, the SSC would become the world's largest particle accelerator. It would require a huge scientific complex and the construction of an underground tunnel 53 miles in circumference. The cost could go as high as $6 billion. Physicists around the country see the superconducting super collider as a wonderful tool. It will serve as a giant microscope, allowing them to answer a basic question. What are things made of? I think the Greeks were fascinated by this question. How does the universe work? And they put aside mythology and uh, superstition and tried in a logical way to find out how the universe works. They developed the strategy, atoms, small things. <clears throat> if you devise the most primordial, simplest objects, uh, and uh, you say, these are the building blocks, then you ask, what are those objects and how do they cluster together? to make the bigger things, the things you can touch and smell and see, then you've got the plan for how the universe works. The ancient Greeks had no way to confirm their theories, but scientists today have already built huge particle accelerators, like this one at Fermilab near Chicago, that can look inside atoms. The problem is the accelerators aren't big enough. One of the fundamental uh, things we've learned from quantum mechanics, from physics of the 20th century, is that uh, as we probe the very small, the world of the atom and within the atom, the nucleus, the smaller the distance scale that we want to try to probe, the higher has to be the energy of the particles that we're probing with. The SSC would be 20 times as powerful as the accelerator at Fermilab. Scientists using it would accelerate two beams of protons, part of the nucleus of atoms, to almost the speed of light before smashing them together. They would then record the results. To achieve this enormous energy, protons will hurtle first through a linear accelerator and into a small booster ring. From there, a series of larger rings will push them to more than 99% of the speed of light. Finally, they will be injected into the main accelerator, an oval ring 53 miles around. Radio waves will accelerate the protons as they race thousands of times each second around the main ring. But the more energy the particles gather, the harder it is to make them take curves. So the protons must be continuously steered by powerful superconducting magnets. 
At maximum energy, the protons collide. Scientists then use a huge device known as a detector to track even smaller particles that live only for an instant. Can it really answer the, the, the questions about the nature of matter or the beginning of our universe? Yeah, and that, uh, Joyce, it's interesting you say that because there are two sciences that are a little bit offbeat. One is cosmology, which asks the question of how the universe came into existence and how it developed into what we see today. And there's particle physics, which goes beyond chemistry, which deals with atoms, beyond nuclear physics that deals with the nucleus. It asks what are the ultimate constituents, what is matter really made of at the deepest level we can possibly ask. And these two fields, one, the study of the biggest thing in the world, the world itself, the whole universe, the other, the study of the smallest possible things, are really the same science. No one will actually see what happens inside the rings when the protons collide. The particles are too small. But computers will record the data and then will recreate, in a graphic sense, what happened. At the moment of collision, the protons will reach an energy of 40 trillion volts. For an instant, man will recreate ultra-high temperature conditions that scientists believe existed at the beginning of the universe, at the so-called Big Bang. In that sense, the machine is a time machine. It takes us back to the nature of the universe uh, shortly after the Big Bang, maybe you know, a thousandth of a billionth of a billionth of a second after the Big Bang. One of the key predictions that has been made uh, that we can test with the super collider is that there well may be a new field of nature called the scalar field. One of the most dramatic things that we have uh, seen come out of astronomy in the past years is that it appears from observational evidence recently that all of the galaxies in our universe may be clustered in a large scale structure that resembles huge bubbles, huge voids with nothing inside. And all the matter of all the galaxies clustered on thin shells around these empty bubbles. That would be an evidence of a what we call in physics a phase transition in this scalar field that would have happened in the early universe in which it would be a bit like the foam of a uh, boiling kettle of water crystallizing and locking into forevermore the structure of the universe the memory of that boiling process at the very beginning of time. While some scientists see the super collider as a time machine Others regard it as a microscope. Today, quarks and leptons are thought to be the basic constituents of matter. But scientists want to peer inside this subatomic world to learn more. Nobel Prize winner Steven Weinberg says there's a theory to confirm which may explain why these particles have mass. There is a new force that we know exists. Uh, we don't know all its properties. And we know that we're going to find it with the SSC if the SSC is built, because it, everything we know about it indicates that its effects will become manifest at the energies that can be reached with, at the SSC. That's one of the reasons the SSC is being designed to reach those energies. If the SSC is built, it will be called the Ronald Reagan Center for High Energy Physics. While still in office, President Reagan approved its creation. Every time someone turns on his desk computer, makes a phone call, or plays a video game, he's plugging into that mysterious world of quantum physics. The superconducting super collider is the doorway to that new world of quantum change, of quantum progress for science and for our economy. In the face of ever-increasing global competition, the United States must maintain the leading edge in science and technology and building the world's largest particle accelerator is a visible symbol of our nation's determination to stay out front. Staying out front with technology usually brings economic benefits. The SSC is an experimental tool, but already there is an air of anticipation about what the new knowledge it uncovers could mean to American industry. In fact, just building the SSC is expected to help sharpen American skills. The basic laws of nature, 
uh, in the past, uh, they seemed very uh, esoteric and far removed from ordinary experience. And yet, electricity and magnetism, quantum mechanics are the basis now of all of our, of all of our technology. So now we're investing ahead in that deeper understanding and the power that obtains from that basic knowledge of the world. Roy Schwitters will be the director of the SSC project when it's built. We personally, are, are the scientists, are driven to do the science. But to do that, we have to invent new tools and methods to do our science. And many people can then use those tools and methods in other applications, sometimes in other sciences, uh, probably the most uh, dramatic uh, in terms of economic payoff has been the development of these uh, what are called magnetic resonance imaging devices, the CAT scan devices that are used in many hospitals now. That technology developed from the detector technology that's uh, commonly used in these accelerators. Today, magnetic resonance imaging is considered a billion dollar industry, not counting the lives that have been saved. The part of the Houston Area Research Center, known as the Texas Accelerator Center, has also worked on accelerator magnet design. Its director is Dr. Russ Hewson. What other kinds of practical applications might you uh, get from this research? There are other areas that, that will help. The very small accelerator that is in the very front end of the machine is also used for PET scanning, positron emission tomography that's used in uh, the hospitals for detection of heart disease and so on. So they're, they're very positive things that spin off as you're building this machine. We don't know what we'll find, but in the past we've always found very significant discoveries. There is also a fear that if America does not invest in the SSC, than our economic competitors will. It's generally been understood, not only here in the United States, but also by the countries that we compete with, countries like Japan and the countries of Western U uh, Europe and the Soviet Union, that uh, you can't have a scientific establishment based just on producing consumer products or developing applied technologies for specific applications, that a healthy scientific establishment has to include research at the frontiers of knowledge. And uh, for that reason, the, uh, all of our competitors are building high energy physics laboratories. Some of the most important discoveries of the last decade were made, in fact, at uh, the last few decades were made at the great consortium at uh, CERN in Geneva. Fourteen European nations built the huge particle accelerator at CERN and they'll have a new model in operation this year. Many scientists believe that the commitment at CERN has allowed European nations to challenge the United States half century of leadership in particle physics. Today, many American scientists travel to Geneva in order to conduct experiments. Meanwhile, in North Texas, people await a decision by Congress to fund the early stages of the super collider's development. It, it could be the catalytic agent that uh, catapults us into the 21st century, uh, very similarly to what the Johnson Space Center did for the Gulf Coast and all of the Southwest region in the 60s and the 70s. So, uh, you know, it is not the only project, but it is certainly one of the most instrumental projects uh, in uh, transitioning the Texas economy to a more high technology base than we've had in the past. Joe Barton's district includes the site in Ellis County chosen by the Department of Energy for the Super Collider. In the direct economic impact in the construction phase of the project we'd look at approximately 7,000 construction jobs. In the operational phase of the project we'd look at about somewhere between two 2,000 and 2,500 uh, direct jobs on site. And my guess is between 10 and 15,000 indirect jobs uh, in, the, uh, in the Texas economy. The word jobs has a welcome ring to most Texans. The depressed economy has cost many people their ability to earn a decent living. The SSC would be placed near the small town of Waxahachie, just south of Dallas. And the town's leaders welcome the prospect of the giant complex becoming a neighbor. 
I think the uh, town will benefit tremendously from it. I think it's uh, a chance of a lifetime, so to speak, for a city of our size. Uh, chances like this uh, just come along once in the history of a town. When the SNC is built, this sleepy part of rural Texas will never be the same again. Six billion dollars will be spent during a seven-year construction phase. Then once the SSC is in operation, its annual budget will approach three hundred million dollars. What's more, the history of similar large projects suggests that the SSC will encourage additional growth in Ellis County and the rest of the state. Texas politicians hope that the Super Collider project will be the catalyst for bringing other technology-based projects to the state. They also believe the SSC will enhance our state's universities. Former Governor Mark White was among the first of the state's leaders to see the potential of the SSC for Texas. In 1984, he authorized a $400,000 grant to the Houston Area Research Center so that Hart could find an appropriate site for the project. What could something like this truly mean to Texas? To bring together the best and brightest minds in the country and around the world to Texas will make this an economic magnet for new activities. People will come here because this is where the action is. Just like they came to Texas when there was a new oil boom, that was where the action was. The action to bring the SSC to Texas started in 1983, five years before the Department of Energy picked the Texas site over contenders in five other states. It began with the efforts of a few scientists, then picked up steam with the help of a well-known businessman, and later grew with the support of state politicians from both major parties. Governor Clements activated a commission that the legislature created to help bring the SSC to Texas, and he put his weight behind the proposal. Well, you know, it, it also appeared that, that this effort uh, cut across all party lines. Behind the scenes, how much was it truly a bipartisan effort? Totally. It was a 100% effort on everybody's part, and it wasn't only the congressional delegation that sort of set the tone in this regard, but it was also in the local communities, it was in the legislature, it was in state government, uh, it was uh, all across the state that this is, this is not a Republican uh, party nor a Democratic party uh, nor a partisan issue of any kind. This is what's good for Texas. Texans were united on the SSC proposal largely because of the efforts of a small group of high energy physicists at several universities. These men realized the significance of the SSC and told others about it. They also pushed for a research center that would serve as a precursor to the SSC. A key member of this group was Texas A&M scientist Dr. Peter McIntyre. Why did you suggest back in, in, in 1983, I believe it was, that, that an, an accelerator project be built in Texas? At that point in time, until that point in time, Texas was really not perceived on the national scene as a major player in high energy research uh, in the development of accelerators. And uh, so a proposal for the super collider would come, as it were, in a vacuum from uh, a present engagement in that field. Uh, we managed to uh, gel the support of four of our major universities, Texas A&M University, the University of Texas, the University of Houston, and Rice to agree to work together in launching a common center for accelerator research uh, based in the woodlands, the Texas Accelerator Center, uh, under the umbrella of the Houston Area Research Center. Uh, that, I believe, was a pivotal step for the Super Collider. The Texas Accelerator Center would become a key factor in the quest for the SSC. And Dr. Peter McIntyre credits businessman George Mitchell with providing much of the seed money to start the center. So I asked Peter, what do you need to really try to get this thing moving? He said, well, we need a, a helium cryogenic generator, which gives you liquid helium, which is an expensive piece of equipment, about $500,000. We need certain uh, facilities. We need this.
money. He also started talking to other state leaders about the project. At Hark's Texas Accelerator Center, work began on a federal contract to design the type of huge superconducting magnets necessary for the SSC. Dr. Hewson, who came to the center from Fermilab, joined Peter McIntyre and others in developing support for an SSC proposal. What lessons might be learned in uh, seeing how the SSC was brought to Texas for other, uh, bringing other major scientific projects here? The scientists themselves gave many, many talks around the state to Rotary Clubs, Kiwanis, high schools, to introduce to people the idea of what it was about, what it's for. I think that was a very important part of, of uh, getting it started, getting the ball rolling. Uh, the scientists talked to the congressional delegation and pointed out to them the various advantages of the machine, its, its use, and the spin-offs that it would have for uh, society. And, and we have, uh, in that way, convinced the Texas delegation to be solidly behind the SSC. So that when it came time, the fact that we, uh, to, to put our proposal together, we had a, a lot of people in the state through the Hark structure that were knowledgeable about what was going on and we weren't stirring around trying to figure out what is this super collider project everybody's talking about. We knew. I think this educational experience was, was, was a very good one because I've, I keep meeting Texans and the first thing they tell me is that they're excited about the superconducting super collider. I've never met a Texan who said it was a bad idea. Once the Department of Energy announced it would seek the best possible site in the nation, Texas backers of the SSC went to work harder. The state funded the site selection process. Fourteen possible sites were picked and then winnowed down to two. And in a major move, Texans went to the polls in 1987 and approved spending $1 billion in bond money on the SSC project if a Texas site were selected. No other state would match this offer. And the people of Texas said, let's participate to the extent of a billion dollars right in the middle of a depression that we were going through here in Texas. That was a magnificent gesture on the part of the people of Texas of full support. Another factor was the geology of the land around Waxahachie. The tunnel for the SSC would be placed 150 feet underground. It was critical to the project that there be little or no movement of the earth, either from tremors, fault lines, or land subsidence. And Ellis County was on top of one of the most stable land formations in the nation, a formation known as the Austin Chalk. This stable environment met the government's requirements in every way. When the selection of the Texas site was announced last November, politicians from other states suddenly became less interested in supporting the SSC. That meant funding for such a costly project would be difficult. Nearly everyone agrees that the super collider is a good idea, but many in Congress question whether we can afford the project right now. This is where the battle lines are drawn. Congress has been asked to supply $250 million for the SSC project in the coming fiscal year. Joe Barton, one of the early supporters of the project, is optimistic Congress will vote to fund it. I have to believe that the United States of America wants to remain a great country economically, and I have to believe if they want to make that commitment, they're going to need to fund projects like the SSC. Yet some scientists also fear investing so much money in just one project. This is an expensive project, and some scientists fear that money spent on this project is going to take money away from their scientific areas. And um, I can understand that's a natural feeling. I don't think it's necessarily true that uh, scientific spending is a zero-sum game, that spending money in one area of science necessarily takes it away from other areas. It may take it away from completely different parts of the federal budget. Texas has a large and powerful delegation in Congress, so many observers feel the state has the political clout to get the SSC funded. Scientists and contractors in other states 
who may share in the development and use of the super collider are also expected to ask their representatives to support its funding. Nobel laureate Leon Letterman has testified on behalf of the SSC. I think one of the most important things about it is it's, it gives a message to the young potential scientists in the country that the country's interested in this kind of abstract uh, science and therefore it encourages them to invest in science. Uh, the science itself is unpredictable, what comes out of it, but it's uh, very much, I think, very deeply a part of our culture that we uh, continue to ask these questions. The superconducting supercollider is much more than just a new scientific tool. It will also serve as a new economic engine for America, an engine that will help ensure that we will continue to call ourselves a great nation. I'm Joyce Gay. The Joyce Gay Report is underwritten by the Woodlands Corporation, developers of the Woodlands, today's real hometown for people and companies. And by Mitchell Energy and Development Corporation, finding and producing natural gas and oil for over 40 years. The long-term potential for enhancing our understanding of these fundamental forces of nature can literally set the course for our civilization in the next thousand years. These are very profound human questions for a nation, a great nation like the United States, to turn its back on this aspect of what we call our civilization would be a tremendous defeat.